Okay, hopefully that's a little better. Um, you can see basically it came with a little attenuator to clip on the uh, uh, sensor wires there, and you can see the other two little terminals alongside the LEDs are for the battery uh, voltage sensor. Um, positive from the PV panel, uh, negatives both to the battery and to the uh, PV panel, and uh, positive to the battery. And there's a ground lug there in the center. The housing should uh, uh, be grounded. And then you can see it's got a little uh, set of uh, a dip switch there. And in the direction to use that to uh, set it up as far as whether you want it to automatically equalize or if you want that to uh, be started manually. And uh, we also set the uh, bulk charge uh, voltage and uh, so forth on there and the uh, system voltage uh, based on the directions. Then it uh, comes with a little button there if you don't have the uh, remote control you can uh, start the equalization uh, charge uh, off the button without removing the uh, cover plate. So anyway you can see I've got a couple of uh, bolts there to drive in and one up on the top and it's just got a couple of uh, screws holding it to the panel right now and uh, I do believe I'm ready to drop it in there and then uh, drag my uh, wires out to uh, my battery box and drag the other ones out to the refrigerator vent and then up uh, onto the roof. Okay, here we are now. I've uh, went ahead and pulled all the uh, wiring out to the battery box there and ran the other wiring uh, down along the cabinets here and uh, pulled the grill off the intake there in front of the furnace so I could run a snake uh, back through this side and pull the uh, uh, cables to the solar panels up through there. I'll uh, have to reach in there and secure those cables and make sure they're not uh, actually on top of the furnace exhaust pipe there. Uh, but anyway, that should be a pretty good uh, routing. Then on the outside of the unit here, uh, I just took a half inch uh, drill and used the uh, where the gas line comes through as kind of a reference uh, inside as to where I wanted my uh, wires to come through there above the furnace and uh, sealed those up good. So um, then over here on the uh, battery box side, you can see I pulled through uh, the positive and negative battery leads, the uh, thermal probe and the trimetric wires and volt sense wires. So next steps will be getting up on the roof, uh, making my hole through my uh, refrigerator vent there and uh, running my snake down here and pulling those up and uh, getting that buttoned up. And then I'll be uh, jerking the batteries out of the battery box here and probably putting the shunt here and uh, getting terminals on everything, getting everything labeled, and uh, then we'll be uh, pretty much ready to uh, mount solar panels, and that'll be about the end of it. Okay, here's the back of the refrigerator box with the uh, lines run up the uh, vent stack here. I just ran them behind this piece of Romex that runs to the 110 power to the fridge, kept them tucked in that corner uh, neatly out of the way, and also so they won't... Uh, can't rub or chafe on the uh, uh, tubing in the refrigerator. And then up at the top here I've taken the hood off the uh, fridge vent there. It's just uh, four square drive screws. Uh, one of those seven and one uh, scraper tools is really nice for removing old uh, Dicor uh, sealant. It's uh, stiff enough yet not sharp so if you have to like plunk it around something on the roof like a vent or whatever it uh, easier to remove it. Anyway, appropriate size hole saw there for the end of my conduit. Cut a chunk of uh, conduit tube and glued it to the junction box I showed earlier. So I think before I actually run the wires through and hook them up to the bus bar here, I'll take this uh, conduit and box uh, down and paint it white just to uh, make it look nice. Okay, here on the battery box end, I've got all these cables uh, coming out and I've uh, identified the one for the uh, uh,
positive connection for the charge controller there and uh, heat shrinked a uh, cable and then the negative to the uh, charge controllers running here to the shunt as is the negative to the trailer and then I've made a, uh, a negative jumper for the battery. Labeled my uh, four conductor uh, twisted pair wire for the trimetric and uh, would have been handier if it would have come with four different colors but it comes with a pair of black and white uh, wires each as a twisted pair so I uh, used a voltmeter basically and figured out which one was which and labeled them as far as signal G1, G2 and and uh, battery positive is going to have to be longer to reach the positive terminal, terminal where the rest of them go to the shunt and then it has a uh, grounding uh, shield wire which I'll uh, ground to the frame down here. I think my uh, battery voltage sense cable also has a uh, shield so once I get that stripped I'll probably put those two in the same lug. And then here's the box for the trimetric. You can see I've uh, labeled everything just to make it idiot proof if somebody has to uh, take it out and reinstall it or whatever and I double checked and made sure I've got those all to the uh, correct lug with a little dielectric uh, grease and uh, that'll be ready to button up and then we'll start working on the uh, uh, voltage circuit back there. Okay, here's the shot of the uh, battery box with the batteries uh, reinstalled. I also made uh, new interconnect cables out of some number one uh, welding cable. So there's my shunt and uh, Bolt sense and interconnect cable, negative cable there, and all the positive connections are up under there. Um, when you have a uh, group of batteries in parallel like I do, it's important to uh, put your uh, the negative side of the load on the battery on one end of the string and the positive charging and load and all that on the other end of the string uh, to keep the batteries at an equal uh, state of charge. It's also important to have uh, heavy uh, interconnect cables. Um, any resistance through them will uh, give you resistance through the whole system. And over here you can see the trimetric is working. The uh, pulsation there is uh, an artifact of the shutter speed of this uh, camera. It's showing uh, negative 2.6 amps. When I walked in here I was shocked and then I realized oh the lights are on. So. Uh, Cut those, and you can see my power consumption dropping. I think as the shunt uh, levels out, it'll drop to like 0 0.1 of an amp or something like that, which I assume is probably yeah, volt sense, maybe from the uh, converter. So that's working good. The uh, charge controller, or the TriStar isn't energized yet because I have that uh, disconnect out until I get my panels uh, ready to go. Okay, I wanted to take a little shot of the trimetric now that it's programmed. Um, in a nutshell, you've got this select button here, which will toggle you through B2. I don't have a second battery. B1's at 14.5. I've actually set it to equalize. Amps, it's got a tenth of an amp going in. Uh, the thing is pretty much in must be getting close to float mode and percentage full. Uh, for the meter to calculate percentage full it needs to know the uh, storage capacity of the batteries in amp hours and it also needs to know the uh, bulk charging voltage of your charge source minus about a tenth or two tenth of, tenths of an amp. And then there's one other uh, figure that you have to set which is basically the amp hour rating of the battery times two and then divided by a hundred. So two things will trip when it decides the battery is full and one is that the uh, uh, when the thing's in bulk charging mode you know it's putting full amperage to the battery and the voltage will rise uh, slowly and then it'll level off. So it'll reach that voltage and then the charge controller will hold that voltage and not uh, give the batteries a voltage that would damage them and it would still pull at high amps and it would maintain that steady voltage as the amps taper off as the batteries get more charged. So that's where the uh, um, 
battery capacity in amp hours uh, times 2 divided by 100, or in my case about 4. So the thing will decide the battery is charged when the voltage is above that level and the amps that the battery is taking is uh, below 4 amps. You know, it will poke the uh, select button in and hold it. You get the amp hour reading thing. If you continue to hold it, you'll get P1. That's my uh, charge voltage uh, set point. I've got it set at 14.3. Uh, I should be running 14.6, uh, I think, for bulk charge. Next, P2. That's my 4 amp uh, setting, the battery capacity times 2 divided by 100. And P3 is 210, the amp hour capacity of my batteries. So if you want to change one of those, then you'd uh, poke select and reset and hold it down, and then you can toggle through a select uh, as it goes on up the scale. Uh, a blinking decimal point, I think, means times a thousand, something like that. So it uh, can be set for a uh, hugest battery bank. And out here I wanted to take a shot of the uh, solar panels. Um, got one laying on cardboard uh, face down so I can put the feet on. The other one's lying face up here. They've got uh, these uh, Tyco connectors uh, on them, so I'm still waiting for uh, matching cables for that. But uh, anyhow, before I hoist them up here, I'll go ahead and uh, um, put mounting feet on the frame. I think I'll actually use uh, six of them per panel just because of their size and the high winds we have here. And while I'm at it, I'll probably take my voltmeter uh, to those connectors and make sure both of them are putting out voltage and uh, some current. Okay, here's a little shot of the roof and the dying light. I meant to get a shot of uh, how these uh, feet mount to the uh, panel, but I forgot until I got them up here. Uh, basically, it's a Z-shaped bracket, uh, U-channel, and Z-shaped bracket, and uh, some quarter by 20 bolts. It actually came with one hole, and uh, the brackets came with one bolt and nut and washer per bracket. I actually uh, put in two. Um, it's got another stainless steel bolt nut and a couple washers, and uh, I also mentioned I loctited them. Um, I also went with six mounting feet uh, per panel just because of their size. I'm sure they're uh, plenty well attached, but I thought that would take some of the stress off the uh, frame of the panel. So these are bolted down with uh, quarter inch uh, lag bolts under a bed of uh, butyl tape there, and you can kind of see how the butyl tape uh, squishes to fill any little voids. And uh, same thing with my uh, junction box here. So I've got a big uh, zip tie for strain relief there, and then I've got my positive and negative uh, bus bars hooked up. So I'll be ready to, uh, when I get the matching cables, to uh, run them through here. And I'll probably just use Dicor uh, sealant to secure the cables. Of course, I'll be uh, putting Dicor. Uh, lap sealant on all the feet around the uh, box here. Probably when I run cables through these uh, watertight plugs I'll probably uh, put sealant on those too just for a little extra water tightness. So anyway that's what the junction box looks like installed and I've got that conduit running over and sealed to the side of the uh, fridge vent. So that'll be all for now. I'm not calling for rain but I'll put the uh, hood over that vent just in case and the lid on that box. This putty is actually pretty uh, waterproof by itself but it really needs a coat of uh, lap sealant uh, all over the bracket and around to the side of the uh, trailer. I'll uh, clean up uh, the roof a little bit with mineral spirit uh, before I seal it and getting pretty close to being done.